Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter and Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. What is the truth of God? How in this evil world do we find the truth? Well, Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible shows us that God's word is true. His commandments are true. Everything about God's way is true. Yet we live in a world that is deceived. And people are so deceived that they grow up in a society and everything that they're told and taught and is accepted it is good, they think that's what it should be. And that's the way that it has always been. But that's not so. Just within our lifetime, as David Kupelian has written in his book, The Marketing of Evil, he says this, The plain truth is, within the space of our lifetimes, now all of you who are past 50, I want you to think back. Much of what America once almost universally abhorred has been packaged, perfumed, gift-wrapped, and sold to us as though it had great value and especially for the kiddies. Oh, yes, by all means, for the children. By skillfully playing upon our deeply felt national values of fairness and generosity and tolerance, these marketers have persuaded us to embrace as enlightened and noble that which all previous generations since America's founding rejected as grossly self-destructive and a word, evil. What is evil? What is good? Do you know what good and evil is? Do you know right from wrong? Do you know truth from error? Do you know the commandments of God? Or do you live in the deluded world of Protestantism that the laws have been done away? If that's the case, then, then there's no sin. And if that's the case, you don't need Jesus as a Savior. How deluded could it be? How could we have a so-called Christian religious system that now embraces everything God said, don't do? And yet we accept it. And yet we say it's good. How could that be? Well, it's done step by step, a little bit at a time. And Satan has his agents at every level in government, every level in religion, every level in the community, and in the heart of the Christian church. And they're the ones who have changed it. And the people have gone along with it because, oh, they love to have their fun and games. You know, it's just like when Moses was on the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments, and God gave him the last commands concerning the keeping of the Sabbath, that the people came to Aaron and said, Aaron, this man Moses, he's up on that mountain where there's all this smoke and fire. We don't know what's happened to him. He's been gone a long time. Now, why don't you make us God so we can have a feast? So what did Aaron do? He said, oh, bring all your gold, and he fashioned a golden calf. Now, that golden calf was fashioned out of the one coming out of Egypt, had two horns and a sun disk in it. Right there while God was giving the laws and commandments and statutes and judgments to Moses. Think about the gall of people. Think about the weakness of Aaron, who was typical of the religious leaders of this world who compromised to please the people. So he made the golden calf and said, Tomorrow is a feast unto the Lord. Oh, this is now accepted as the way of God's way. And I, as the, the future high priest, well, I've sanctified it. It's a feast unto the Lord. So they all gathered around. They had a wonderful party. What it was, it was like Woodstock. Sex, music, fun and games, straight out of the cauldron of Egypt. When Moses came down, he was so angry, he broke the Ten Commandments that God had written the Ten Commandments on the stone with his own finger. And he said to Aaron, what have you done that you make this people sin a great sin? Oh, he says, don't be mad at me. 
You know these people are given to mischief. They just wanted to have some fun. Well, what is this idol over here? He says, well, the people brought me their gold, and I threw it into the fire, and out leaped this calf. Voila. Well, the same thing has happened today. People accept what is evil as normal. And it's sanctioned by the religious leaders. So I want you to read this quote, which you'll hear me say many times on Church at Home. When a well-packaged web of lies has been sold gradually to the masses over generations, the truth will seem utterly preposterous and its speaker a raving lunatic. Now, especially so when it comes to the holidays of this world and all the fun and games that the children have. Halloween comes from the pagan religions. Halloween and the history of it is all detailed in this book that you need to have, that you need to order. Go online to truthofgod.org or churchathome.org and you order this book, Occult Holidays or God's Holy Days Which. And this cover is deliberate. The skull for death, the Ten Commandments of God for life. Which will you choose? Today, God is calling upon you and everyone who knows the truth of the Word of God, really wants to find God and seek after God, He's calling upon you to accept the truth of His Word and to reject all of that which is evil and pagan and given under the guise and sanction of the church that is called Christian. We've forgotten the commands that God gave to the children of Israel. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's see it here. Deuteronomy 12 and verse 30. God said, take heed to yourself that you do not become ensnared by following them. That is the pagan religions of the nations around them. After that, they are destroyed from before you and do not ask about their God saying, how did these nations serve their gods that I may also do likewise? Oh, it's fun. Oh, it's wonderful. They have feasts. They have great times. They have sex orgies. They have rock concerts. They have Halloween parties and masquerade balls. Isn't that wonderful? But who's orchestrating all of this, God or Satan? And the question becomes, whom do you follow? And if you follow God, do you follow him his way? Or are you another Cain that you go to God and tell him what you will do for him? Now let's read on. God says very clearly, you shall not do so to the Lord your God for every abomination to the Lord which he hates. They have done unto their gods, even their sons and their daughters, they have burned in the fire to their gods and the priests of Baal were the priests that did this. And you know what they did? They were called the priest of Baal or cannibals. Cannibals. They ate the human flesh of the sacrificial children. God says, verse 32, everything that I command you, be careful to do it. You shall not add to it or take away from it. He talks about it for prophet Arises in chapter 13. says, oh, well, here's an interesting thing I think we ought to incorporate into the worship of God. Isn't this nice? Oh, let's have some candles over here that we won't burn. Oh, let's have a cross up here when God says, don't make anything. They, oh, well, these gods were really well intended. God says, you shall have no other gods before me. Do you believe that? It's kind of like one man I was talking to recently, and, and he was all excited because he was doing the Lord's work and helping feed the homeless and those who were been down and out on their luck and taking care of the widows. And, and I said, well, you're really doing good with that. Now, that, that's really nice. I'm happy to see that you're able to take the time and do that to help them. But let me ask you a question. Those things are taking care of your neighbor, which God says you ought to do. And that's showing love toward your neighbor, isn't it? Question. 
how do you show your love to God? I said, yes, you're keeping the last six commandments. What about the first four? What about the one that says, you shall have no other gods before me? And the one that says, you shall not make any graven image of any likeness, bow down to it or serve it and worship it, which all the other nations have done, by the way. And don't take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And then, boy, did I hit a nerve. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. And he says, I'm not getting into that argument. I said, well, you have to choose. Are you on God's side or not? What you're doing is fine. But don't you think your creator deserves your worship and your loyalty and your allegiance the way he says to do so, that he may bless you? Well, likewise here. So they're not to go around and see what the other gods have done, the gods of the nation, because what did they have? They had all of these pagan rituals. And burning the children in the fires is part of ancient Halloween. Did you know that? Coming from San Haynes. Now, in this book, Cold Holidays or God's Holy Days, which we have all the historical evidence of were documented where these practices came from. And you will be astonished. You will be amazed. This book will be the most eye-opening book that you will have ever read. And I ask you to take up the challenge because we will send it to you at no cost because there are people who love God and are involved in preaching the gospel who have purchased this book for you for the specific purpose of sending it to you at no cost, that you may have your eyes open and have the scales of deception lifted from your eyes that Satan the devil has brought down upon you in the guise of Christianity and religion. Now, Let's ask the question, how did this get into Christianity? And it came in through the Roman Catholic Church. And I know someone's going to say, there you go again, about the Roman Catholic Church. Well, why don't you take up the challenge? Why don't you prove by the Bible the doctrines that they teach, and you'll find that 98% of what they teach is direct out of the cauldron of paganism. Now, if you want to know what your enemy is doing, you read their book. Like Patton said when he saw Rommel coming up the valley with his tanks to come after them, he had his binoculars on and he was looking down there. He had his artillery and his tanks all lined up and he said, Rommel, you old fox, blinkety blank. I read your book. So, I read the books of the Catholics. Here out of a catechism book called My Catholic Faith by Louis Le Revere Borel. So he proudly boasts this of the Roman Catholic Church and their practices of renaming pagan festivals to Christianize them to encourage conversion into the Roman Catholic Church, not to God, to the Church. Quote, in the history of the Church, we find that she often Christianized pagan festivals, making use of dates and ceremonies, and endowing them with an entirely new and Christian significance. Huh. God says, don't do it. Remember what we read last segment? Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, abominations in the earth. Now, in another book called Witches, because you see, Halloween is based upon witchcraft. Here is what Erica Young wrote. Christian holidays were deliberately set at times that had been sacred since the earliest pagan days. Christians knew the power 
paganism had over the people and usually renamed rather than reinvent holidays. Now, since there's one great authority in the Roman Catholic Church, that is the Pope, the Vicar of Christ, who sits there in his chair of ex cathedra. Anything he says while he's sitting in that chair, and any letter that he signs, any encyclical that he makes, any declaration of dogma that he gives, is inspired of God. Not so. That's a fable you have been led to believe. I just say, if you don't believe me, just look at all the idols around St. Peter's and in St. Peter's. And ask yourself the question when you read the second commandment, how did this happen? Pope Gregory the Great, he lived from 540 to 604 AD. So he's the one who advised the Archbishop of Canterbury, which was Catholic at that time, by the way, that they should first introduce All Saints Day into the church to commemorate all the saints that didn't have a special day. Now, isn't that wonderful? Continuing on now, by the ninth century, the Roman Church was holding a Eucharist of reconciliation for those dead who had not been named among the saints the evening before October 31st, and was called All Hallowed Eve. Tenth century, got to keep adding to it, you bring in a little more, you bring in a little more, you bring in a little more. Tenth century, they added All Souls Day, which then is on the Roman calendar, November the 2nd. And what was that for? Oh, we're so good-hearted that we want to have that to help people get out of purgatory. Purgatory? Where is that in the Bible? It isn't there. All wrapped up in Halloween. Not something? America, when it first started out with Protestantism, did not have it. And there were a lot of Sabbath keepers that came over because in England, they were persecuted for keeping the Sabbath because they did what the, what the Anglican church officials said, read the Bible. And they read the Bible, and lo and behold, it says, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. And so they were persecuted and chased out, and that's why they came here. So they knew that all of these days were not of God. They didn't keep Halloween. They didn't keep Christmas. They didn't keep New Year's. But it didn't take long. With the advent of other, other immigrants of Catholic faith coming, then that's what happened. So they did that for many, many different things. Now, here we are in America today, a few hundred years after our settlement, you see. Let me tell you a little bit about Halloween. Wicca and Satanist High Sabbat. Satan is the god of Halloween. You want your children out there following Satan the devil? Oh, well, we would never do that. They're just out there to have fun. Really? Well, why don't you watch this? All about Halloween. Watch this, because we're going to play it again. <sighs> Since it's all for the kiddies and the children, oh my, isn't it nice? We have sanctified this Satanist day. 
and made it for the children. Here's what happens with Halloween. It marks the beginning and the end of the satanic year. Quote from Halloween and Satanism, page 146. At this time, the power of the underworld is unleashed and spirits are supposedly freed to roam the earth. It is considered the best time to contact the spirits. You want to send your children out on that night? Let me show you this magazine called Oriental Trading. And you will see from this magazine how far they have gone. This is called Fun and Faith for the Fall. Look at the jack-o'-lanterns that they have made with crosses. Hmm. Did you know that Halloween is one of the highest holy days of witches and Satanists and the homosexual community? So Halloween, then, is really the sinister direct celebration of Satan and death. See, because they had sacrifices performed by witches, and many of them in the highest levels of society and civilization. Did you know that in the past few decades, Halloween's popularity has grown by leaps and bounds and is only second to Christmas? Halloween is one of the biggest shopping holidays for many retailers, generating now over $6 billion in sales for costumes and candy and things for kids and things for adults. Two-thirds of all adults celebrate Halloween and consumers send to each other 28 million Halloween cards. Now, we're going to see that San Francisco is the capital of the world, or at least in America, of the celebrating of Halloween and what it really means to them and what it really means to the witches. Now, there's no such thing as white witchcraft. And did you know that your children have been indoctrinated into witchcraft in cartoons and things and movies put out by Walt Disney, the wonderful, caring person for all of our children. Did you know that all of those movies are a cult? Did you know he's promoting Satanism? Oh, but it's funny. It's fun. Let's see what God says. Deuteronomy 18 and verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. And of course, go online and look up walking on coals and fires. Adults do that today. Ho oh. ho. Or that uses divination, which is witchcraft, or an observer of times, or a fortune teller, or a witch or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or one that seeks oracles from the dead. And that's describing Halloween to a T. That's exactly what Halloween is all about. And where does that lead? Question. Are you going to send your kids out on Halloween? Are you going to dress them up as goblins and ghosts and commemorating the dead? Are you going to buy a pumpkin at the store and cut out a face in the pumpkin and put a candle in it? I know when I was a kid, but well, we had fun doing that. I didn't know what it was. But now it's reached the proportions of real gross sin and evil and Satanism. Amazing. Remember what God said. Don't teach your children that. God says you shall keep my commandments and honor me. God says do not learn the way of the heathen. God says of the holy days and holidays of this world, I hate your feasts. Why? 
because of the origin is from Satan the devil, cunning, clever, counterfeit, make believe, let's have fun, let's involve the family, and above, by all means, let's do it for the children. What are you going to do this Halloween? What are your children going to do? Do you love God? Do you want God's blessing? Or do you want the curses called benefits that come from Satan the devil? These are the choices that are set before us. So be sure and listen to the next segment of Cult Holidays Halloween. And let's see, let's look to the bottom of the cauldron of this big witch's brew pot that symbolizes witchcraft, Satanism. And what else? Let's see how San Francisco celebrates Halloween. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home. Now you need our book, Occult Holidays or God's Holy Days, which you get this book and you read it. And be sure and listen to the next video cast of Church at Home. So this is Fred Calder saying, Till next time, so long, everyone.